And here we are. We are back. Happy New Year with the Blame Girl Podcast with Mr. Terry Wayne. What up, Terry? Happy New Year. Mm. So Not so far. Uh, yeah, it's been rough. She's having connectivity yes. issues. I believe she is shooting on location at the Creek in the Cave in Austin, Texas. So I can't wait for her to get in. Um, she's getting some help. So uh, I am actually on location. That is the improv, the world famous West Palm Beach improv. And Kevin Hart is here tonight. We're trying to get in. We're trying to get those overflow tickets. So I decided to shoot here. Terry, you're what trying you to get in. <laughs> I'm trying to what? You're trying to get in. I ain't trying to get in. Yeah. I, well, me and Mindy, my friend Mindy's mm. here. Anyway, mm. so how was your weekend, Terry? Or wait, no, how was your break? Uh, well, as, uh, I got COVID that sucked, ruined my Christmas and my new year's. Uh, I was not well for some time and then, uh, and then I got well and that's what I did with my break. <laughs> that's pretty much the entirety of my whole break <clears throat> but was spent either sick or well, recovering. had a lot of fun leading up to that break nonetheless, right? What's that? I said we had a lot of fun leading up to the break. Yeah, that was fine. That was fine. Uh, you know, did a bunch of shows and, you know, had your birthday celebrations. That was fun. We did Uncle Scott shoes. We did Just the Funny. We did Red Light, which was my birthday celebration. And we did the improv party. We had a holiday party here at the improv. We joined. And uh, yeah, we had COVID. I say we because I also caught the COVID over the break. And you didn't um, have COVID. You just got COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't. It didn't affect me really. You just flirted with COVID a little on Facebook. Uh, we we fucked for the weekend. You know. Yeah, I I was asymptomatic. I was very very lucky. I know that. Um, but it was, and I was also very lucky in the fact that I did not give it to my family because uh, I was like kissing my mom on the cheek the day before I found out. So, and it was an experience, quite an experience. What do you think about all this, Terry? Um, I think it, as long as you're vaccinated, it's fine. Uh, there's nothing. You know, uh, the numbers for ho hospitalizations and for deaths of vaccinated people from COVID is not even, it's so small, it's not even worth arguing about. So we did yeah. what we were supposed to do. We have a cure. Some people don't want to take it. Fuck them. Let's move on. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm really taking well, that Rocky Four approach. Sit here and you know? say, like, Sure, because I mean we're both vaccinated and we both got it, you know. Yeah, but I wasn't worried about, you know. I knew it was going to be shitty when it started because, uh, you know, as soon as the fever took in, I, I knew it was going to be shit. Uh, but I was never worried about having to go go to the hospital or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I think we've all done enough to try and appease anti vaxxers but at this point, we need to just if we just all do this for one year the problem is done you know what i mean yeah so i think that's what that's what we need to do yeah stop arguing about it if people you know don't want to get vaccinated let them and, you know send flowers to their family well i think this is a good transition into our first topic unfortunately our guest still hasn't joined us um fingers crossed she'll get in at some point uh yes people are covering their eyes sticking their head in the sand when it comes to covid and there was a good movie over the break released on netflix guys it's called don't look up right and you know it's got me really seriously thinking about like how I would spend my last days on earth. <laughs> it did because I feel like it, like Neil deGrasse Tyson said, it's a documentary. It's not really a fucking story. It's a documentary. It's how we, we operate now. You know, what do you think, Terry? Who's the well, the thing? movie, the movie's an analogy for climate change. That comes straight from the director. I don't know how people wrap it up with COVID, but I, I guess I could see how, how that makes sense too. Uh, 
but no, it's a, it's just because it's a slow moving comet towards us doesn't mean that it's any less important. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. the, and, and how he goes beat by beat by first people deny it, then they use it politically, then they try to, you know, <clears throat> then they try to monetize it, make money off it. That's exactly what we would do. Exactly what we do. The only thing I didn't like was they didn't include other foreign powers uh, because they might actually do something serious. You know, their culture yeah. isn't the same as ours. So Russia and China, their yeah, reaction I noticed might that be a lot the movie. They didn't. Uh, sorry for interrupting. I did notice that in the movie, though, that they didn't. It's not like they tried to act like, you know, Europe or anywhere was going to help. It was all on America. I thought that was. Well, there was there was some parts about them trying to do something, uh, but their plans failed as well. Uh, but yeah, to to think that you know, Japan, China, Russia, they, to think that these superpowers wouldn't do anything is just that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, but it's an allegory, like you said, you didn't see it as being an allegory for COVID. I mean, yeah, it's for climate change, but it could be for COVID because that's how we're operating with it. And when it's something like a pandemic, not necessarily a meteorite, you can't even count on one country not to participate. You know, we all got to kind of participate and try to fix the problem. So I well, see, that's why I see, like the relation to COVID, you know? I've been saying it for 15 years. Uh, whether it's climate change, whether it's civil war, whether it's a pandemic, uh, American society has changed. Our culture has changed and the way we think has changed uh, to the point where you would rather def defeat your enemy than save yourself. Uh, there's, no, there's really no coming back from that. And something bad is coming down the pipe. And honestly, we kind of deserve it. So... I mean, I, I don't know what I don't know I don't what know else to I tell you. you. I don't know that I. But like, so why well, would like we in the church? In the church, they used to have sayings like, "Hey, get right or get left behind." Well, that's kind of all of us now. So you either need to get right or get left behind. But until just, then, go like, tights. <laughs> like in the movie, at the like you know, at some point someone actually did look up and was like wait a minute when will we have that moment with climate change will we have that moment with covid you know oh yeah yeah the, the we're gonna have that we already had that moment <laughs> with covid but i think you see what happens uh people when have gotten that so moment with covid i would say about the time we passed half a million deaths uh <laughs> But yeah. that's but that's the thing is we're so entrenched now we're so bad at this game now that we'll make excuses for anything. Like if if you're a climate change denier and you have been since the '80s when this first got brought up, uh, you could be standing in your house with fish swimming around your feet and you'll still find reasons. Oh well, you know this is part of the natural cycle, you know, or whatever yeah. stupid yeah. thing. That's why. I mean, and a lot of people think Trump, Trump caused this attitude. He didn't. He exploited this attitude. It was already there. He just exploited yeah. it and, and threw gas on the fire. But uh, and now we're I, I just I'm blown away that you think that we've passed that point. Oh, we passed that point a long time ago. OK, well, <laughs> there's, there's uh, no coming back. Okay, well, what about this? Like, why won't we collectively look up as a people? You know, like, why, why, what's the thing? Like, why won't we just look up? Like, in the movie, you these people to. would not look up because these politicians told them. Is that why? Is it the politician? No, it's the idealism. It's not a politician per se. It's an idealism. Yeah. A lot of Trump supporters I know say, well, I like his policies, but I don't like him. You're basically saying you hate the other folks so much that you'll vote against your own. You'll vote against your own best interest as long as you get to own Nancy Pelosi or, you know, yeah. you're, you'll vote for Joe Biden as long as it's not Trump. You know, like both sides are equally wrong and <laughs> and it's going to stay that way because that's the way we are now.
And, and it was the most dangerous lesson we ever learned was how to die on every hill. You know? Yeah. What, but I don't even think it was just like started with Trump. I think that started with President Obama. Like that's when they got so extreme. It was crazy, you know? Well, you say them as if it's one particular group. It's not. If you say so. One group may have started it, but the other group definitely chimed one in. Group, one group refuses to listen to science. And one group does put everything into science. I do. Well, the last person I said, uh, the last person I heard uh, talking about, you know, I, I trust God, not science. Uh, was someone I knew who was a pastor and ended up dying of COVID and half of his congregation is now like, what? <laughs> so. All right. Well, tell me this, Terry. How would you spend your last days? Yeah, I like how you said what it's got me thinking what I would do if I if I if I was on my last days. Uh, yeah, you might be. <laughs> yeah. Why, why do people always knew, think there's got to be a you knew there edit? was if you knew it was imminent, what would you do? How would you spend your last days? Well, that's what I'm saying. You should treat all of your days like they're your last days because they very might, well, you know, they very might well be. Uh, you know, um, you don't know. That car accident hits you on the way home, girl. Like. No, yeah. Tomorrow, you know this saying, tomorrow, as a pastor's son, tomorrow is never promised. Nope. Nope. Thing. But just uh, what would I do if I knew, like if the comments head in my way? Uh, I don't know. I'd probably find the person I love the most and, and bang a lot. That's... <laughs> so so my, mine is, you know, if I knew we were in the last days, I'd definitely do heroin and I'd want to have sex probably. Mm. That's what I would do with my last days. No, I would, I, I would, so I would I'm, find I'm getting someone. some commentary um, that's not on the Facebook, but just side commentary. A follower is saying that they would just treat it like the purge. I'm wondering well, if that means that they feel uh, That's horrifying. That's, that's, that's horrifying. That's horrifying. That's horrifying. That's horrifying. Um, yeah, of course it's horrifying. Treat it like the purge. I hope that isn't Mindy over there talking that shit. No. Um, no? <laughs> no, no. I so hope it isn't a woman in general talking that shit. Because the purge ain't going to go good for a woman. <laughs> I said, you better hope it's not the purge if as a woman, because I'm pretty sure the purge ain't going to go good for a woman. I'm like... Well, it depends on if she's an armed woman or not, right? Well, that doesn't really matter. Somebody going to be purging you if that's the situation. <laughs> All right. Um, so, I don't know. I thought Any news on our movie. guest? <laughs> no. I messaged her. No update yet. So, this is quite unfortunate, but we'll see if she can get in at some point. Um, so... Yeah, I like I said, I do heroin. But you know what? I, I Another thing I want to say about the movie, though, is that it reminded me a lot of Idiocracy. Have you ever seen that movie? Idiocracy? Yeah. The funny thing about Idiocracy is the creator of that movie said this was never supposed to be a documentary. Yeah. And it's still... He said that in an interview six say, years ago. It's still... Like... But in Idiocracy, it was a little crazier. They were watering plants with Gatorade. Which what we plants crave? Yeah, they need electrolytes. So, uh, <laughs> we needed electrolytes when we had COVID. You know, COVID really fucking hit everywhere this holiday. We both had COVID. A lot of people that we came in, like, no, had COVID. I'm still hearing that a lot of people are testing positive. And last week, the CDC actually revised the COVID-19 isolation guidelines. They may not be done yet, 
Terry, who's to blame since you're my only guest tonight? Uh, well, I mean, there's no one necessarily to blame. The, the problem comes in that every one of these yokels that's screaming at the top of their lungs that nobody knows anything and this is all either this is all fake or this is all crap or this is blah, blah, blah. All you're doing is throwing fuel on that fire for them. Uh, and basically you're giving them ammunition to come back and say, oh, look, see, you didn't know what you were talking about. Yeah, they did that. They did that with the, the anti-maskers did that right in the beginning because they said, well, in the beginning, they told us not to wear masks. And it's like, yeah, because they didn't want to have a rush on them. They didn't want to run out for healthcare workers yeah. because of every scared mom getting. But as soon as they secured their own stockpile, then they said, OK, all right, now go ahead and do it. But you can't explain that to somebody on the opposite side of this issue. They, they've already decided what the situation is and now they're just looking for evidence to support that conclusion like they're not looking at, at facts or reality well i agree with that i think that it's not good because for that reason like it's gonna give people who are deniers the ammunition to be like and i gotta say like for me even just them loosening up the guidelines a little bit makes me a conspiracy theorist you know like i'm like my friend she went and got a test the other day and she was just like yo they didn't go all the way in my nose and i was like that's because they don't want you to test positive listen at me i sound like them you know um because they don't want you to test positive yeah, like they have a dog in this well, fight. Who's the blame here, Terry? Is it Dr. Fauci? Like, because he's in no, charge of no, his no. I wish nobody knew that man's name. Like, as soon as he became the face of this issue, then it gave every inbred retard uh, a target to fire at. You're, you're talking about an elderly doctor who's worked for the federal government since Reagan. Like <laughs> nobody gives a shit about this man for 40 years. And now all of a sudden he's this evil mastermind. It's so fucking stupid, man. People watch too much TV, watch too many movies. They think there's always gotta be some plot behind everything. No, sometimes bad shit just happens and you do what you can about it. Yeah. Until, like I said, a bunch of inbred and know nothing morons get in the way of everyone else's progress. I think that, like, of course, I don't think it's Dr. Fauci that's to blame, but I think that it's, they can't keep up with these variants. And, you know, like, um, the thing is, I really think that Mother Nature is trying to kill us, or at least, like, she should. She should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's what the variants are. They're, she's like testing it no. out to see what no. works best. No. And then, you know, now she knows how to spread it the easiest. Now it's going to come back no. dead. That's what I that think. is not, that is not how I'm it works. I'm a conspiracy theorist now. I, I know you it. are. I know, I know, I know you're always leaning towards that way. My yeah. bigger question to all of this is, you know, we, we've gone through this before. We've had this plenty of times before, whether it was swine flu, bird flu, SARS, uh, you know, we have gone through this, this magnitude, though. Those well, I know, but why? Man, that's that was going to be the question before you interrupt it again. Why? Why did this one get out of hand? Because, like I said, we've had them before. They've, you know, is this just is COVID just so much more infectious, or did we uh, perhaps wait too long or bumble the response, like? Why did this so, one get out of hand? Because we've had this many times before. You know, another theory I have about why they are lessening the restrictions. Have to oh, do I want to know your theories. It has to do with the supply chain, right? Yeah. It has to do with them wanting us to keep the economy moving, basically. Um, and we, as we've talked about on this podcast, are having 
supply chain issues and they don't want those to continue. So part of my theory is that they're like, okay, you can go back out there after five days. They're not swabbing quite as much, you know, like deep. And that's because they don't want all these positive people because it does hurt the economy. What do you think about that? Um, no, no, <laughs> I don't think that at all. Uh, I mean, I get why you think that. I get the 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 math behind that is like, oh, well, we got to do this and we got to do that. But uh, I don't I don't get that vibe. I don't get that vibe at all because, I mean, people are going to get sick and it, I mean, for the past year and a half, two years, if anybody got sick, they're just like, well, it's COVID, you know, which isn't necessarily true. There's plenty of other <clears throat> there's plenty of other virals and, and, you know, there's plenty of other illnesses going around. Uh, so it's not necessarily to say that it's COVID just because you get sick, but that's the mentality we're at right now. So, you know, whether you test positive or not, like if you get sick, I know people that got COVID, never got tested, just ride, rode it out and then just went back to the- Yeah, life. and they're able to be like, oh, I never had it. Bitch, you ain't been tested all the time. Like, that's what I realized this time. Another thing, you know, another thing about this ever-changing guideline is that they have learned that with COVID, you you can test positive for up to 12 weeks. Is it okay to keep asymptomatic people away from work when they're not contagious? Because you're only contagious for the first three to five days, two to five days, you know? You get it? You're not if, if you're asymptomatic, yeah. You get it. What? Well, and that that's that's why they lowered the uh, quarantine uh, time from 10 days to five was because they said, well, you're if you're asymptomatic only that only applies if you're asymptomatic. Uh, you know, if you're asymptomatic, they're saying wait five days, then you can go back out in the world. Yeah, so I, I think they're doing things pretty legit. I mean, I like it because it it was just in time for me because I was asymptomatic and I was I'd gone to Texas and to see my family for the holidays. And the day after I got there, I had to isolate. I had all these plans and just fucking had to. Well, how did you know? Them. How did you know you had it? Because you told me you tested positive. That's right. And, I took the test. and then you stayed away from your parents and I saved your mom's life. You're welcome. I hope you did, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I love my parents, but not everyone does. And specifically Ted Cruz's daughter. I mean, let me take that back. I'm sure she loves her dad, but she doesn't like him. And she certainly looked miserable in the family Christmas photo. Who's to blame, Terry? Uh, Ted Cruz. Would you be happy if your father was Ted Cruz? Of course not. No. I would, the, I would... the most hated politician in Washington on both sides of the aisle? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's pretty bad. Look, if you're a Democrat and Republicans hate you, that's to be expected. Same thing if you're a Republican. But when your own party looks at you and goes, yeah, like that's that's a whole nother level of shit. Hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I they mean, said that they but in, in in Ted Cruz's defense, his daughter is like 15, so she doesn't really know politics that well to hate her dad enough. But I'll tell you what I think it is. She mentioned that the photo is edited. They made her shirt longer. Of course they did, because they're conservatives and they don't want their daughter to look like a floozy, right? Yeah. If I was his daughter, I'd start an OnlyFans page. Uh, she is 15, <laughs> Terry. No, don't start an OnlyFans. Oh, I didn't know that. Caroline. Know. But you don't have to be <laughs> nude on an OnlyFans page. <laughs> That's true, but I don't think... I'm sorry, she is 13. She is 13. Um, and she did have like a little half shirt on, but 13 year olds can wear that. 
it's not sexual. But they cropped her shirt, so I think that pissed her off. You know, 13-year-olds are just miserable. So I could think it could have been any politician's daughter. They might have edited the photo, even a Democrat one, because they want to have this wholesome family. They don't want a kid with a crop top, you know, in the video or in the picture. Maybe, uh, maybe he should just leave her at home like they did the dog. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You they can't can do that with children. I think he knows that. He'll get huh? CPS called on him, and that would be much worse than leaving his dog at home. Um, you know, but what I do appreciate about Caroline is that she, di like, disagrees with her dad's conservative philosophy. Um, she's out here. She got on there. She's like, I'm best sexual, which I don't know if I buy because she's so young, and kids tend to fluctuate. But... Um, I did appreciate that about her. Like, she's like, I'm not like my dad. I'm liberal. But that's the case with these conservatives' kids. Like, look at Claudia Conway. You know, she always bucked her mom's beliefs. Well, that's a typical kid thing to do is yeah. once you reach a certain age and you start realizing that maybe your parents don't know everything, uh, you know, that's when you start going, well, let, let me take a look at all the things he said was bad, you know? Yeah. Kind of like nothing makes you want a guy more than your parents telling you, stay away from that boy. Like, <laughs> and it's like, hmm. Oh. Well, um, is rough because it's only me and you it's like how can we keep the conversation going but you know what i'm gonna move it on to the next topic and that is our beloved betty white all right we lost her on new year's eve december 31st 2021 betty white actually fucking died that's crazy first of all she said i couldn't take another year of this shit that's what it was. I don't blame her. Can't blame her. But you know, like, she was so beloved by all. I was thinking about her and I was like, she's like nonpartisan. Everybody loved Betty White. I never saw a conservative go on and be like, fuck Betty White, you know, like, or of course a liberal, they wouldn't do that. But um, like, she was so non polarizing. Who's to blame, Terry? um snickers yeah snickers snickers candy bar uh because nobody knew who she was like no you knew her some people knew her from the golden girls but mostly nobody knew who she was she was pretty much in obscurity and then she did that famous super bowl snickers commercial and all of a sudden career resurgence now she's the cool hip thing you know it's everybody everybody who's under 30 is like oh i love betty white it's like but you don't even when, know betty white when was that snickers commercial when did it come out uh, i believe it was early 2010s it was one of those uh i'll look it up while we're talking but um yeah it wasn't yeah, uh, it wasn't all that been, long ago. like not long after that she ended up being the oldest person to host saturday night live but you know what it's because it's like you know she was not polarizing and i think i don't know if it's because she has like this sweet entertaining demeanor you know she was, well who's uh, gonna bounce an old lady that's not named nancy pelosi you know yeah it was 2010 <laughs> it was uh the 2010 super bowl yeah so right after that she ended up hosting saturday night live and like i say she has this sweet entertaining demeanor this expansive career and she wasn't very political as of recently i mean the most political thing she did recently was you know support animals and love animals but in the i think it was the late 60s maybe early 70s betty white actually had a black um dancer on her show and risk getting canceled and did get canceled and she was like fuck it so but she was still to this day a non-polarizing figure 
and everyone said that we've lost her. So. Mm. Well, I mean, look, Betty White's fine and all, and she was she definitely had her funny moments. She was a great performer, uh, but this isn't Abraham Lincoln. You know what I mean? Like this is a pop culture figure. Like, <laughs> yeah. How many, how many, uh, you know, memorials and candlelight vigils are you supposed to have? She was she ninety nine years old died wealthy and famous like it's pretty good life you know what i mean she had an amazing life yeah and for as i understand it she would like always wanted to like be reunited with her husband in death so um and what's crazy to me is there's all these little facts like i didn't realize she was the oldest golden girl she was the oldest not sophia sophia was younger than her you know so it's just crazy you didn't look it but i guess it depends on how you live your life True. All right. So I guess Katie's not joining us. Uh, she's being non responsive on Instagram at this point. Um, let's go ahead and. Ooh. I know. Why don't you interview me? I've never been a guest on this thing. I was just thinking that. So yeah. I was like, why don't we just ask Terry these comedy questions? Sure. Terry Wayne, how long have you been doing comedy? uh it was 10 years this past october 10 years what this past october 10 years this past october what was your yeah. motivation to start doing comedy i have no fucking idea uh i was i was a comedy fan since the time i was like 11 years old when i discovered evening at the improv on like uh the old uhf channels uh they used to play it and or they'd play it on uh like comedy central back when that first started uh yeah you know you know uh when uh kids in the hall was still on the air and uh so i'd stay up late and then they'd play evening at the improv so i got to i got the opportunity to see some amazing comedians before their careers ever took off you know uh, louis ck louis black uh jerry okay. seinfeld before the show like I mean, it was it was crazy to to then be able to look back and listen to like Lewis Black doing jokes about Dan Quayle as the vice president, you know, I bet uh, a lot of you guys don't even know anything about Dan Quayle. <laughs> no, a, a lot of them don't even know anything about Lewis Black, which is sad. Who Dan uh, Quayle is for that matter, right? What's that? Um, I said, or who Dan Quayle is for that matter. That is true. Um, so, what was your proudest moment, Terry, as a comedian? Hmm, proudest moment. Um, you know, I, I did a, I don't do comedy contests anymore, but I was doing one one time. Uh, but it was, it was judged by other comics that weren't on the show. And, and I, I ended up winning that one. And, and that was amazing to me because I knew half the comics in the audience uh, weren't exactly fans of mine. So the fact that they had to grit their teeth and still check it off and, uh, and do that, that was pretty awesome. Um, yeah, that is awesome. You know, Cause they like voted peer, fairly, peer it sounds like. Well, just have peer, to have peer validation, you know what I mean? Uh, as opposed to just validation from an audience. Um, but I, I'd have to say performing at the comedy store was probably my proudest moment. Yeah, you know, that's, that's the, like to me, to me, that's the church. You know what I mean? For, for stand up yeah. comedy, there's, there's no more place more historic, you know, and, and the way it all happened was insane. But the fact that I got on, the fact that I got to do five minutes and the fact that it went pretty okay, uh, I was uh, I was supremely happy about. So, all right. So, um, what has been your biggest challenge doing comedy? I, I I would say it's definitely all the stuff that happens off stage. Uh, you know, 
learning how to keep your mouth shut uh, and learning to be more personable off stage. Cause I mean, it's definitely a hindrance. <laughs> it's definitely a hindrance, but uh, there is a part of me that's kind of like, just stick to your guns, believe what you believe and blah, blah, blah. And that does, that does kind of undercut what you really want, but I don't know. It just depends on who you want to be. Yeah. You know. Well, who are you outside of the stage? Like, what's your day job? Uh, I got work. I do stuff. What about you? <laughs> you got what? I got work. I do stuff. What about you? <laughs> no, I'm interviewing you. You're not interviewing me. <laughs> oh. These are our questions. Well, I mean, I talk about it on stage. I, I have a, uh, a home inspection company uh, that I run that 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 pays the bills, which is it, for me, it's perfect. Uh, it's perfect for doing comedy. It's perfect for traveling. Uh, you know, because whenever I I want to go somewhere or whenever I want to do something, uh, I write my own schedule. So I just take that time off and go do what I want to do. Come back and works with sitting here waiting for me. Uh, yeah, so it, a it's a very result. fortunate situation for me. Totally. All right. Um, how are you from Florida? No, man. Tennessee, right there. How Division champions been? as of Sunday. How long you been in Florida? Uh, it goes back and forth. Uh, you know, because I, I moved quite a bit as a kid. Uh, and back and forth and then when i got into my 20s i moved back to tennessee stayed there for a few years and then just kind of bounced back down here and you know all right, all right. yeah I, I prefer I mean, it here though i prefer living here i like it a Ten lot here T tennessee has its good qualities but i don't know if i could live there in this in this climate it's all bad right, enough Terry, just being next ready? to waxahassee are you ready to play the blame game? Uh, yeah, go ahead. You mansplain up. all the time. Who's yeah. the blame? <sighs> Man, me, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I hate that term when you use it. Uh, you know, when I was when I was growing up, they used to just call it being a know-it-all. You know, uh, now it's got now it's evolved into mansplaining. But so what do you call a woman? That, that, what do you call a woman? That know, well, what what do you call a know-it-all woman? Like I've met those. Is that woman explaining? No, I doubt they express their knowledge the way men do. So, okay, uh, I don't I don't really think it has anything to do with my genitals, but if you say so. So uh, we didn't get an answer out of Terry on the mansplaining. But we I said it was my fault. Whatever. It's a um, personality flaw. Do you have anything flaw. to promote, Terry? Uh, yeah, actually, um, I, I got roped into a show uh, that I didn't, I didn't know what this was going to be. <laughs> but apparently, I am on a uh, variety show Saturday night in... Uh, at the Coral Gables Elks Lodge, where I'll be with Mark Christopher, uh, between a comic I've never heard of and a couple of magicians. So that should be interesting. Shows with magicians are always fun. Um, oh my God, I just realized I am in a show on Friday night. It's a Corey Cognac production. I just can't remember where it's at i know it's in stewart um but you know you if you follow us which hopefully you do if not follow us and you can find out um where that show is but like i said it's saturday and it's in stewart terry's saturday and it's in coral gables so um i guess we'll go ahead and wrap it up we never had our guests join unfortunately uh Terry, do you have words for white people this week? Yes. I wish that I didn't, but yes, I do. Um, it's a new year, people. It's a new year. 
The only reason that New Year's is a holiday is because it gives us this idea of rebirth or gaining something new, being able to be a different person. So I would just advise that it's a new year. And unless you want 2022 to be just like 2020 and 2021, I would advise everybody to try your best just to be a different person. And that goes for me as well. Um, I am trying not to be such a know-it-all uh, or mansplain, um, as Gio would say. Uh, but I'm also trying not to argue as much. Um, I've stopped arguing with anti-vaxxers and anti-maskers uh, just because why? Why, why bother? Why, why bother? They, they read and hear all the same things I do, probably more so, probably because I'm not listening. Anybody who starts off with, you know what the big scheme is, I don't even listen to them. Like, I don't, I don't listen to anything that starts with, I'll tell you my theory. You know, it's just, it's not good. Uh, but I would just recommend just trying to be a, a, a little bit softer. Uh, because once you, once you, decide to die on a hill like we were talking about before that's all that's going to happen now maybe you'll be proven right or maybe you'll be proven wrong but at the end of it you're still dead so and that doesn't have anything to do with covid that has to do with you as a person so i would just advise everyone to uh, try to be softer try to be open-minded uh you know don't rush to judgment on people or ideas um and uh because frankly, I'm just sick and fucking tired of all of it, all of the arguing, all of this back and forth and hatred and this and that. Uh, it's not going to lead to anywhere good. This is not how if you if you're a Trump supporter, this is not how you make America great again. Uh, and if you hate Donald Trump, you're playing right into his hands with this shit. So just uh, 2022, try to be a new you. Wow, like that's very tame. That's a very tame. I'm starting off assessment. soft. I'm We're starting off white soft. Not very aggressive. I don't know how I feel about it. It's not going to be good uh, for ratings. We'll, we'll see how the year goes. We'll see how the year goes. All right. I, well, I bet guys, I could make it to the third week of January. <laughs> I think you could do that. I agree. I agree. All right. Maybe. Well, guys, um, thank you for joining us. Sorry, our guest didn't show up. Um, <clears throat> so maybe I should have mansplained how to log in. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you should have. Anyway, all right, guys, we will see you next week with a new guest, and hopefully they will show up. <laughs> so um, we'll talk to y'all next week. Until then, um, have a good week. We're at. We're both out on Saturday. Come see us. All right, bye, guys. Bye, bye.